Good morning to my congressman, Good morning. to our head of our health department, and we have, uh, let me just say, congressman, we are also joined by uh, three of our council people are here as well. I see Eric Costello here, and I see um, uh, Burnett, and I see Stokes. Thank you so much for being with us as well. Uh, as many of you uh, may not know, and I tell folks that we have the greatest health director in the country uh, in Lena Wynn, and so we're grateful to have her with us as well. I believe David McMillan is with us. He is the director of emergency management, and Samantha Kerr, Be More Power, uh, is also with us. For those of you who don't know, this is International Overdose Awareness Day. And someone would say, well, you know, are we celebrating? No, we are making people aware that this is a major problem, not just in our city, but in the state and in the country. And just recently, we were able to have a conversation led by Dr. Wynn and our congressman around what we're doing about addiction in this city and how they are addressing it. We were joined by Elizabeth uh, Warren uh, and to talk about what are we doing about this problem nationwide and how are we addressing it. And I think, uh, Congressman, one of the words that I heard uh, Senator Wynn, uh, the Senator say was that the word that she took away from Baltimore most of all was flexibility. Right, right. Because we have to be flexible as it relates to how we're treating and understanding this problem that again is facing our city, our state, and our country. And in that conversation, we talked about, you know, the various phases that people go through and more importantly, how we have to address it. Because even if you walk out this door and you walk down certain streets, you'll see signs of addiction right in your face, whether it is laying in the park in front of us or across from uh, the police department and even on Bass Street and what people, when people see folks who are homeless, Part of the things that they don't understand, Congressman, is that this is, there's a drug addiction problem, there's a mental health problem. And I think if you were to talk individually to our health workers who are on the streets of our city, because one of the things that we talk about as a city is how to make Baltimore a 24-hour city. Because we realize that the problems that we're facing aren't nine to five. And so as our police department works 24 hours, uh, Dr. Wing can tell you that she has healthcare workers who are working around the clock. So does DPW and our other emergency organizations because again, we realize how severe these problems are. Today is about raising that awareness to reduce the stigma of drug-related deaths and to remember those who have died, suffered permanent injury due to drug overdoses. And you know, oftentimes we don't even think about that. People think drug addiction, you can get right past it, get on with your life. But the reality is, is that some people are impacted for a lifetime. And more than 25,000 Baltimore City residents suffered from substance abuse disorders. Baltimore City lost 1,806 lives to opioid overdose since 2015. Nearly 44,000 people in our city have been trained on how to use naloxone since 2015. Every day, residents have saved lives of more than 2,600 individuals with naloxone. Uh, we encourage all citizens, partner with us, organizations, and community members to visit www.dontdie.com. Org. Uh, we are honored by those who have joined us because they too realize how severe this problem is. And when I think about drug addiction, you all, you know I think about homelessness and that's why that word flexibility is so important. And I think that uh, Congressman Cummings will tell you that in that round table discussion we had, there was conversations around transportation needs you know, I want to get to treatment, but I don't have transportation. But you have to think about the mindset of someone who is drug addicted. You know, the ability to get up and move, you know, to another location or to find a way to a transportation system. It's not that it doesn't exist. 
it's my state of mind that I'm in. And so that's why the folks that are standing here who dedicate their lives every day to changing the outcomes for so many citizens of our city are so important to all of us. And so I am really grateful uh, that we are shining the spotlight. And people say, well, why would you shine the spotlight on this? Because we care. Because we care and because we know that we can make a difference. And there are lots of us out there who can make a difference. And so we're asking our public to join us. Join us in this effort to make a difference in the lives of so many because only by the grace of God it could be any of us. Everybody knows somebody who's been touched by drug addiction. Everybody knows somebody who's been touched by mental illness. And you don't know what the reasons may be or why they slipped into this particular situation. But what we do know is that we can save lives, we can change lives, and we can continue to work on behalf of all of our citizens. And as we lift those that we can lift in our own communities, we want to be able to lift those who are not in our communities, who are around the city, around the state, and around this country. And I think you'll hear Congressman Cummins talk about that. And having said that, I would like for Dr. Wynn to join me just for a second as we present you. I have Dr. Wynn said, God, every time I look up, the man's presenting me with a proclamation. <laughs> Uh, but this is just to say thank you for uh, the Overdose Awareness Day. And again, what we're asking you all to do is to share the information and uh, to go on the website uh, to look at the opportunities that you have as individuals in our city to participate in how we lift those who can't lift themselves. Thank you. Thank you. And Having said that, I have the distinct honor of bringing to the mic our congressman, your congressman, we call him the congressman for the nation, Congressman Elijah Cummings. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is certainly my honor to uh, be here this morning. And Madam Mayor, I must tell you that I was truly moved by your words. And as you were talking, I could not help but think about the fact that you and Dr. Wynn are willing to help people where they are. I'm not trying to imagine where they should, could be, might be, but looking at them and saying, you know what? I, first of all, I see you. Two, I have compassion for you. And three, I'm equipped with practical solutions to resolve your problems. This is so, this day is so important because, you know, I keep hearing the words fake news. And as the mayor, brilliantly and eloquently laid out the facts about overdose and opioid addiction. It's clear that that's real. There are people who are dying every day. Probably before we finish this press conference, somebody in America is going to die and it's sad to say, from an overdose, somebody is gonna become addicted to drugs. And it is kind of frightening to think that a person could be on a wonderful death, a road of destiny, and then for, that, for them to fall off of that road. Now, the mayor talked about the individual, but she also is well aware of the burden that drug addiction has on a city and on families. When a family has somebody who's drug addicted, Dr. Wynn, it's, 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 it's rough. And all the people in back of me, you know what I'm talking about. 
folks, they look at the person and they don't, they see the person, but it ain't the same person. Because they're, quite often they cannot tell the truth. They're trying to figure out how to get to the next fix. And so we have a challenge. When you've got 72,000 people across this nation dying, with regard to drug-related illnesses, when you've got a situation where only 10% of the people who need drug treatment are getting it, when you have a situation where for the last few years, the life expectancy in the United States has gone down, gone down, mainly because of drugs, we got a problem. Even in our own state, as we battle, and I, God knows the mayor and, the, and Dr. Wynn have been on the front line. I mean, when I say front, I mean front line of trying to figure out every single thing they could do to address this problem. We still have it a difficult time to go. We've got we to gotta do, we've got, we need help from our federal government. We need more help from our state. And so what? Elizabeth Warren and I are doing on the federal level is we've introduced the CARE Act. And I really do believe this act will get passed. But the mayor said it best. One of the things that we have learned in all of this is that word flexibility. We gotta have it. We've got to have wraparound services. We've got to make sure a person gets housing. I mean, if you, can, if you get the treatment and you don't have anywhere to go, that's a problem. And then the mayor, of course, mentioned transportation. If you can't get there, you, you, it's just so many problems. And I know, I know, I know, I know. There are people who say, ah, oh, it's their fault. They, they shouldn't have gotten themselves in it. Well, this is a disease. And we need to treat it as such. We've been going around looking down upon those folks who have this disease. And so we treat them as if it's, it's the plague. But it's not. It's a matter of giving them what they need to stand up and to address the issues that they are dealing with. Now, let me say this as I close. We have to recognize, and the mayor said it quite nicely, we have to realize that these are a lot of our friends and, and the folks here will tell you, these are quite often people who are in pain and they're so, in so much pain, they don't even know they're in pain. And they're trying to medicate that pain, but they're also medicating something else. A lot of them, when they were little children, went through some things, am I right folks behind me? that were, were difficult times, and they're still wrestling with them. And so not only are they wrestling with their pain, they're wrestling with the things that have haunted them since they were little kids. As I've often said about children, it's not what you do to them, Dr. Wynn. It's not the deed, it's the memory. It's the memory that they are left with that haunts them. And that's hard to deal with, and it takes resources, and so, what the CARE Act would do would give them those wraparound services, dedicate $100 billion over 10 years so that we can get to those organizations like the ones that are represented behind me so that they can truly touch those who may be addicted. Now, understand, the mayor and Dr. Wynn and the, yours truly believe in effective, effective treatment. Don't want nobody just open up a little shop saying let's get some money from the government. No, 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 no. Because when that happens, all you do is, first of all, that person doesn't get what they need, the, the addict doesn't get what he needs or she, and then it gets worse. And so what we are looking for is effective and efficient treatment so that people can get what they need. And so that's why we recognize this day and that's why we here in Baltimore are leaders on, that, on that, that battlefield for addressing this. And so 
it gives me great honor to uh, introduce a woman who the mayor was uh, wise enough to make sure she was on her staff. And I, I thank you, Madam Mayor, for that. And I thank you for sharing her, by the way, with the federal government. Dr. Wynn, whether you know it or not, has become probably the premier expert in Washington on drug addiction and fighting it. And so we have a jewel in the mayor's cabinet as we, she's got a, lo a whole lot of jewels in, the, in, in jewel, 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 I guess, jewelers. I want men and women. Uh, I don't want to make sure I get that right. Uh, okay. Um, but the fact is that this is a, she is awesome. And I thank God for her passion, her commitment, and her, and, and the partnership that these two great women have, have, have put together to fight this problem. Ladies and gentlemen, our commissioner, Dr. Wynn. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and thank you for coming out for International Overdose Awareness Day. I will join the mayor and Congressman Cummings in my thank you. I first want to thank Mayor Pugh for your steadfast leadership for always prioritizing health in our city. Mayor Pugh just came to our all staff meeting to thank every one of our team members of the Baltimore City Health Department for, for their work. And I just, I look up to you as a source of inspiration for me every day. So thank you, Mayor Pugh. I also wish to thank Congressman Elijah Cummings some of you may know that I named my son, Eli, after Congressman Cummings. My son just turned a year old, and I hope that at some point I will be able to introduce him to Congressman Cummings so that he can live in the model that Congressman Cummings has shown all of us as a moral authority, as a leader in every way. And Congressman Cummings, I remember something that you said once about how the work that we do is about the three Ps. It's the pain that we're seeing, that we're channeling into our passion that then guides our purpose. That pain, passion, and purpose. And I think for all the individuals in this room, for all of us who are joined together on International Overdose Awareness Day, that's what we're doing. We are experiencing the pain of losing our loved ones. But that's what fuels our passion and our renewed commitment every day to get up and do this work. That then is the purpose of why we're here. And so I want to thank so many people who are here. I will thank you in groups, as there are many individuals. Be more power and our community partners. You'll hear shortly from Samantha Kerm. I'd like to thank our, um, our members of the city council, Councilman Costello, Councilman Burnett, Councilman Stokes are many partners in the room um, who represent the Fentanyl Task Force, the Overdose Fatality Review, the Work Group on Drug Treatment Access, representing a broad swath in public health, public safety, our hospitals, emergency management, city and state, federal partners, including the DEA, Mayor's Office of Emergency Management, the Fire Department, Police Department, Mayor's Office of Criminal Justice, Behavioral Health System Baltimore, hospitals, providers, and of course, our Baltimore City Health Department needle and syringe exchange team, many of whom are here today. So thank you all very much for your hard work. Now you heard from Mayor Pugh about the numbers in Baltimore City. I want to add one more number to this because I think it illustrates the depth of the issue that we're facing which is that of the 761 overdose deaths that occurred in Baltimore City in 2017, 573 of those deaths involved fentanyl. For comparison, in 2013, 12 deaths involved fentanyl, which is a 5,000% increase in the last four years. Now, these numbers are terrifying, and they're frustrating. They're terrifying because they keep on increasing and public health experts will tell you that we haven't even reached the peak of this epidemic. We don't know where that peak is going to be. But these numbers are frustrating because those of us on the front lines know what works to stop this epidemic. We know, as Congressman Cummings said, that addiction is a disease. We know what are these effective and efficient treatments. 
Why aren't we doing it? Well, on this Overdose Awareness Day, we are commemorating the lives lost. We also have to talk about what is working and what we need to do next. Here in Baltimore City, under Mayor Catherine Pugh's leadership, we have one of the most aggressive and progressive approaches to addressing addiction as the disease that it is. We have three pillars, as all of you are aware. The first, we aim to save lives. At the moment that someone is dying, if we don't save their life right now, there's no hope for them to get into treatment. And that's why, as Madam Mayor mentioned, we have gotten naloxone, or Narcan, the opioid antidote, into as many hands as possible. I issued a standing order, a blanket prescription for naloxone three years ago. And as a result of my standing order, I'll give you the most recent numbers. The most recent numbers are that everyday residents have saved the lives of over 2,800 other residents in our city, which I find to be really incredible because, as Madam Mayor mentioned, these are families, these are community members, they are our fellow residents whose lives will forever be changed as a result of the work of our outreach workers and our great partners. The second thing, our second pillar, is that we treat addiction as a disease. We recognize that treating it as a crime is inhumane, unscientific, and ineffective. And that's why Mayor Pugh has led us to establish a stabilization center, a first of its kind, 24-7 ER for addiction and mental health. And under Mayor Pugh's leadership, we've also been working to ensure that all hospitals have standardized levels of care for addiction treatment, that addiction should be treated no differently than we treat any other illness. And then the third pillar is that we're preventing addiction and reducing stigma. And we wouldn't be able to do this work without all the partners in this room working together to ensure that public health and public safety collaborate. Again, Mayor Pugh's pillars about collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. For example, on law enforcement assisted diversion, LEAD, where individuals who are caught with small amounts of drugs are offered treatment instead of incarceration. Now, our many partners in the community, in the city, in the state, in the federal government, we do exceptional work on a shoestring budget. What I find most frustrating is that we are limited in our ability literally to save lives. We're having to ration naloxone, our antidote, at a time of a public health emergency. The Surgeon General's report found that only one in 10 people who have the disease of addiction are able to get the treatment that they need. Now, we've saved 2,800 lives in the last three years, but imagine how many more lives we could save, how many more families who would be intact if only we had the resources to do so. And that's why, Congressman Cummings, we're so thankful for your leadership on the federal level, for the CARE Act. We stand in such strong support of it because it does give us that sustained funding for evidence-based treatment because we're able to have funding that is proportional to the severity of this epidemic and that go directly to local jurisdictions like ours that are the hardest hit. And so I'm so grateful to Mayor Pugh for your leadership, to Congressman Cummings for everything you are doing for us on the federal level, to all of our partners for what you do to save lives every single day in our city. And I want to take this opportunity to now introduce one of our incredible community partners and leaders and fearless activists, Samantha Kerr from Be More Power, who will tell us about her work and her activism to save lives and to improve the health and well-being in our city. Thank you. I am so very grateful to be here today. My name is Samantha. Um, I am a sober harm reductionist and member of Be More Power. Um, Be More Power stands for People Offering Wellness, Education, and Resources. Um, as we speak, um, all the members of Be More Power are currently in five different, five or six different locations throughout the city doing what we do very well, um, if I do say so myself. Um, we're handing out naloxone to people who need it. Overdose Awareness Day is um, is a day for me that is a little bittersweet. Um, it's amazing to be able to stand in front of people, with people that I consider peers, um, and, and to be breathing 
um, you know, I, I have addiction, right? I am a person who, who walks through addiction. And to watch people around me lose their life, um, people that I love, people that I care for, people um, that I communicate with, um, is really hard. Um, so it's really great to be here, to be able to, um, to try and help. Because um, the only thing that the only thing that I can do with what has been given to me by the grace of God um, is try to be of maximum service to the people that are around me. I'm so grateful for the people around me that have given Be More Power the help and the support that we've needed to be able to go into the communities, um, communities that have been dealing with this problem for decades and give them the help and the support that they need. Congressman um, Cummings mentioned wraparound services, and that is a, definitely a thing that's needed in this time. Um, you know, I said we were a harm reduction group, and that's what we do. We try to reduce harm. Narcan is definitely a harm reducing like drug, right? We need that. It brings people back so that they have the opportunity to get what they need. Syringe service programs are also super helpful, right? Not only does it not only does it provide the services of clean syringes, which is great because it reduces the um, transmission of H, HIV and HCV, but also there are wraparound services within that. If you need counseling, if you need, if you need a place to stay, if you need those things, like you can reach out to these people and they have resources and they can help. Um, and to be a part of that is absolutely amazing, but to be able to, to sit and hold space for that is a totally different thing. So today it's absolutely amazing that, that our city has taken the time to sit and to hold space for International Overdose Awareness Day, for the people that we've lost and the people that we can still save. There are so many people that we can still save. People who use drugs are people. That's, that's the end of it, full stop. People who use drugs are people and Sometimes they need help, sometimes they want help, sometimes they don't want help, sometimes they don't think they need help. And to, to me, it's not my, it's not my place. I'm not, I'm not the creator, I don't get to make the decision for other people what they do. Um, but what I can do is make sure that I offer and provide as many resources as humanly possible so that if you want to go to treatment, that's what we do. We're here, Be More Power has resources that can help you get to the places you need to go. If you need Narcan, we have Narcan. If you need, if you need condoms, if you need lube, we have that kind of stuff as well. Because harm reduction is like, it feels like the most empathetic and compassionate thing that we can do in this time. Um, we open our arms, we say, we see you for who you are, we see you where you're at. We're gonna treat you with dignity and respect and we're also not gonna leave you, right? We're gonna meet you where you are and we're gonna take you with us. Um, and it's just, I'm just really grateful and, and honored to be in this space and to be able to be with people. Like I said, I consider these people peers and the people at Be More Power were also peers. We're people who actively use drugs, we're people who have current or used to use drugs. We are people and we are out here doing work that needs to be done. Um, and I'm just, yeah, I'm just really grateful to be, able to, to be able to be here and to say that and to let people know that, um, you know, what we're doing is handing out thousands of, thousands of doses of Narcan and trying to make sure that people have the option to choose whether or not um, they want to get into an abstinence-based recovery or if they want to do whatever they need to do to take care of themselves. So, um, thank you for letting me do all that. And I'm gonna kick it back to the mayor. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, I hope you all heard all the great messages. Dr. Wynn, why don't you join me? Uh, I hope you all heard all the great messages of this morning, and I hope that part of what you heard is the need to connect. And I think, Dr. Wim, one of the things that you said best is that we really need to understand that these are our people, and places of treatment are available, and it is difficult. And Samantha, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being on the front line, because it is how we connect people to treatment 
immediate treatment, but it is also how we connect people to how they change their lives. And I think, uh, Congressman, that's why that word flexibility is so important. And I think about the work that Councilman Burnett is doing on his task force to deal with trafficking. You know, and I was telling someone the other day when I run along Garrison early in the morning, you know, they're out there. You know, there are women who are out there, and men and children who are selling their bodies because they're trying to live. But at the same time, they're suffering from drug addiction, many of those. And so we want people in Baltimore to know that we not only care, but we also have places that can rescue and help change people's lives. You know, we talk about homelessness and we have homeless services. We want people to get up out of the streets and we want you to realize that when we're coming to you, we're coming to you with love and care. So again, I want to salute you for having us come together to recognize this day, but more importantly for Baltimore to recognize that you have a department, an agency, a city government, federal government, leadership, and people in this community who are prepared to help you change your lives. It's not just about the immediate response. It is about the future. Thank you all.